Let me begin by stating that I'm a skeptic when it comes to anything paranormal. However, I do believe in those moments when reality veers into the unexplainable, like the incident that unfolded during my tenure at the truck stop. The place in question was Riggs, a truck stop that I manned during the graveyard shift. My role encompassed cashier duties, stocking shelves, window cleaning, waste disposal, and a fair share of indulging in truckers' fare. When I joined, Daryl enlightened me that although cameras were in place, they were non-functional. So, I assumed casual consumption was permissible, an assumption that later unveiled the truth that the cameras indeed worked, unbeknownst to me. Apparently, the owner was plagued by pilfering. One ordinary night, Riggs was enveloped in monotony. It was around 1 a.m., and the deadness of the night equaled the stillness of roadkill. The last few hours had seen no visitors, not even the trucker who lay dormant in the parking lot ventured inside. The insipid music droning through the speakers further numbed my senses, threatening to lull me to sleep. The intrusion of headlights pierced the night, rousing me from my lethargy. Gazing through the window, I witnessed a semi maneuvering around the building, finally parking on the opposite side. Riggs boasted nearly panoramic windows, which made missing any activity outside an improbable feat. This truck was peculiar. Its gray tractor cab pulled a tanker, an ordinary sight with an uncanny twist, unfamiliar branding labeled it, Carry Sun Transports. The logo depicted a hand clutching a bone. The rig was an exception, deficient in the customary array of lights adorning big rigs. As I observed, the driver hastened out, seemingly driven by urgency. Leaving the side door, I headed towards the register, anticipating a swift transaction. He briskly strode past the counter, veering towards the back by the coolers. Quick glimpses yielded details about him, stocky and short, donning a gray and light blue plaid shirt tainted with sporadic red blotches. Though his face remained obscure, his forward-facing black hat bore the truck's logo. His extended time amidst the coolers incited a flicker of concern. I was on the verge of offering assistance when he returned with a bag of ice. Unease emanated from him, beads of sweat glistened on his skin, eyes bloodshot. His untrimmed beard bore bald patches. Despite his sporadic attention, he examined the pocket knives. Curiosity urged me to inquire, need help with something? Startled, he seemed to notice my presence for the first time, stuttering as he spoke, uh, 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 yeah, can I get one of these knives? His dirt smeared finger gestured at the display. Sure, which one? I inquired striving to maintain a calm facade. That one, the one with the wolf, his shivering intensified, the aftermath of prolonged sleeplessness evident. Unlocking the display case, I retrieved the requested knife, pausing before concluding the transaction, is everything okay tonight? He stared at me for an unsettling five seconds before lowering his gaze to the counter, yup, just a long night. Though dubious, I was no stranger to odd occurrences at the truck stop. All right then, just the knife and ice? My voice was calm, concealing my growing concern. Wait, his abrupt shout resonated, followed by a forceful slam of his palms against the counter. Forgot something, he muttered, vanishing into an aisle. His reappearance was swift, accompanied by a package of Skittles thrown onto the counter. His gaze fixed on me, he muttered, all set now. Great. That'll be $49.63. Cash or credit? I queried promptly. How much, his tone loud. $49.63. You're purchasing a knife, which isn't a cheap souvenir. Add the ice and skittles, I responded, seeking to calm him. Yeah, right, he conceded, extracting a $50 bill from his wallet. Handing it to me, he instructed, keep the change. 
Of course. Need a bag? My inquiry was swift. No bag, he asserted, accumulating his acquisitions in his arms, stepping away to leave. Have a good night. Don't plan on resting here? I halted momentarily, adding, can't stay. No time. I need to keep moving. His reply held an undertone of somberness, impossible to pinpoint. Exiting the counter, I observed his departure. My habit was to monitor visitors' entrances and exits, offering a measure of reassurance. However, what I witnessed was far from ordinary. The trucker, with alarming ease, unlatched the tanker's rear. Ice was tossed inside, and then an anomaly, his abrupt startle. Rushing to the truck's front, he left the cargo area unguarded. Seizing this moment, a body, seemingly severed at the waist and devoid of attire, crawled out and onto the ground. Absence of identifiable features was perplexing. Swiftly, the body recoiled beneath the tanker, escaping my line of sight. The trucker reappeared, sealing the hatch. Disbelief and shock paralyzed me. His gaze directed at me, he returned to the truck's front. Swift gear shifts, and he sped away. The body was nowhere to be found, a puzzling vanishing act. Or was it an exhausted hallucination? Stunned, I lingered by the side door, grappling with the reality of the situation. Eventually, I resumed my place behind the counter, the radio playing the Eagles, Hotel California, the lullaby of weariness. Sleep L. You'd me at rigs, regardless of my desires. The urgency of relieving myself arose, and I hastened towards the restroom door. Yet, a trail of congealed blood on the floor arrested my steps. The path led from the side door to the storage room. Handprints marred the exterior of both doors. Standing at the precipice of the short hall leading to storage, I strained to discern any sound. Noises emanated from the shelves, as though objects were being rummaged through. The memory of the previous event weighed heavily. Human blood, tainted with an enigmatic substance, it confounded police and initiated speculations. Further, Carry Sun Transports was non-existent, the semis branding a fabrication. Authorities questioned my certainty, only to be met with unwavering confirmation. My decision was swift, I left that night. The entity may have left rigs, but its presence lingered, a palpable sense of dread. Authorities conducted searches, but the dog's fate remained unresolved. I wouldn't wait to discover if it returned. Questions remained about the mysterious trucking company, the truck's contents, and the living corpse. If the latter was any indication, a nefarious scheme lurked beneath the surface. A piece of advice, if you encounter Riggs truck stop, proceed with caution or limit your stay. My vigilance cannot protect you, nor would it suffice. If Carry Sun Transports adorns a truck, distance yourself, the unknown within is far from benign. On a serene Sunday evening, I found myself answering a call that would unravel the dark labyrinth of my fate. The familiar ringtone jolted me from my bedtime preparations, as an unidentifiable number flashed on my screen. Clutching the phone to my ear, I greeted the mysterious caller. Hello? Silence echoed on the other end, mingling with distant background noises. After a prolonged pause, a composed, business-like voice broke through. Good evening. Am I speaking to Alfred Lindgren? Yes, that's me, I responded, my curiosity piqued. Who am I speaking to? I'm reaching out from RSA Commerce. Is your interest in the truck driver role still intact? Those words washed away any traces of sleep. I sat up, fully awake now. Yes, absolutely. 
I'm still interested, I replied, suppressing the urgency in my voice. The aftermath of the 2008 recession had left me battered. Life had dealt me a harsh hand, costing me my job as a car mechanic and pushing me to the brink of financial ruin. Employment opportunities had become as scarce as water in a desert. We'd like to extend an interview invitation for tomorrow morning. Can you make it? The voice on the line possessed an almost unervingly smooth and soft quality, reminiscent of ASMR YouTubers. 8.30 AM works for me. Perfect. The interview will be conducted over the phone. I found myself engaged in an interview that steered through familiar inquiries. Why did I think I was a fit for the company? Could I recount an instance of my proactive attitude at work? What was the driving force behind my interest in their establishment? The interview concluded with an unexpected job offer. When can you commence? I inquired. Next Monday, the voice replied, maintaining its composed demeanor. Your presence is required at 6.30 a.m. sharp. Situated in a remote corner, the RSA Commerce Warehouse beckoned, a 45-minute drive from my abode. As Johnny Cash's voice serenaded me on the radio, I navigated through the foggy morning on the highway. A corridor of towering birch trees enveloped me in a tranquil forest as I advanced towards the old, forsaken RSA Commerce Warehouse. Security personnel were conspicuously present, a wave of guards patrolling the vicinity. This overt security presence should have triggered my suspicion, but the allure of a substantial paycheck and confidential deliveries diverted my focus. The man who interviewed me had justified this heightened security measure, emphasizing the delivery of high-value goods. The allure of my paycheck suppressed any doubt, rendering my compliance. The eerie charm of the RSA Commerce Warehouse was akin to an abandoned relic concealed within the wilderness. I parked my vehicle in the empty lot and surveyed the surroundings. Stepping out, I felt a gust of apprehension tingling down my spine. The voice's instructions echoed in my mind as I mentally prepared for the role. My job was explicit, transport the cargo to the destination and return, no interventions, no exceptions. Loaded with cargo, I embarked on my journey, keeping my vigilant supervisor's warnings at the forefront of my thoughts. Days blended into routine. A succinct meeting with my supervisor, the trucks loading, and a brief drive to the drop-off point became my predictable rhythm. Each journey was a symphony of isolation and solitude, accompanied by the melodic hum of the highway. My thoughts drifted as the wheels rolled onward, amplified by a playlist of 80s hits. A particular night, however, veered from the anticipated harmony. Thuds, soft but persistent, resonated from the cargo compartment. Gradually, they escalated into frenzied and desperate noises. Amidst the chaos, a muted sob emerged, cutting through the darkness. Panic gripped me, comprehension setting in, there was someone in the back of the truck. Breaking hastily, I pulled over to the roadside and stepped out, adrenaline coursing through me. The biting cold embraced me as I approached the cargo area. With trembling hands, I released the latches and swung the door open. A blend of fetid odor and faint beeping engulfed me, revealing a scene of horror. In the confined darkness, individuals were huddled, bound by ropes, their anguished eyes revealing their plight. Most appeared unconscious, but one woman, her face etched with despair, locked eyes with me. A plea escaped her lips, laced with desperation. Please, let my little girl go. She's only twelve. Please. Stunned by the revelation, I was paralyzed, caught between empathy and fear. As if fate intervened, a police car pulled up behind me, its blue and red lights casting an eerie glow. Officers approached, oblivious to the cargo's harrowing contents. 
Their jovial demeanor transformed to somber gravity upon hearing the cries from the back. Interrogation followed, the same questions repeated relentlessly. I told my truth, narrating my unwitting involvement, my job's description, and the inexistent RSA commerce. Yet, tangible evidence eluded me. My wages were paid in cash, the company was a phantom, and my calls were met with void. The RSA Commerce Warehouse, once cloaked in secrets, revealed an eerie emptiness under the police's scrutiny. It seemed every trace of their operation had vanished overnight. The world that once spun around me was shattered. I became the sole focus of suspicion, a scapegoat for the sinister operations I unknowingly facilitated. My life unraveled in the wake of these events. I served a five-year sentence for the crime of which I was innocent. But my haunting question was not my innocence, it was the haunting unknown, how many souls were ensnared in my unwitting web of transportation? How many lives had I unknowingly delivered to their grim fates in the back of that truck?